We know the potential that once the rain falls that uh, those communities are in danger. However, look, um, I, I think that the, and I'll just talk on the, the Commonwealth Government or the Federal Government's response um, has been immediate and I want to, you know, acknowledge Minister Murray Watt who, uh, with the Defence, um, have responded very quickly to try and get uh, those uh, people, you know, from those three communities evacuated um, into Catherine and the Northern Territory Government will then take them from Catherine uh, into Howard Springs or Foskig Pavilion. Uh, and look, it may be weeks before um, a lot of those communities, you know, it'll be dry enough to assess the damage because as we know and we've seen the floods on the eastern seaboard, it, this could take up to weeks if not months and we need to be prepared uh, to work with the Northern Territory Government to try and address uh, those issues that we're going to see in, in those three communities. Yeah, it's going to be significant disruption for a, a very long period of time realistically for these communities. But just back to um, the warnings, Marianne Scrimgeour, uh, the ABC has spoken to residents who say, look, we, we actually weren't given enough warning. We could have done with more warning. We would have been able to prepare better. Uh, do you think that residents were given enough warning? Look, I think that the local controller, so in most cases in those communities, the local controller is the local police. So I'm, I'm surprised that, uh, you know, the, the, the police and other people that, we've got, that, that are on the ground in those communities uh, didn't see particularly the Vic River upstream, uh, where we're seeing places like Kalkaringi and Dagaragi, which have flooded previously, that people didn't see those rivers rising. Darwin's been raining or at that top end. Um, as we know, there's been consistent rain since December. And I was just recently in Darwin, you know, working in some of, doing some of the rural communities in my electorate up the top end. Um, and it rained the whole time. There's been consistent rain. And surely with that rainfall, people would have seen the rivers rising. Um, and been alerted to uh, the potential for those floods. So, look, I'm not sure. I don't have the details from the Northern Territory Government in terms of their local controller, but I'm sure that that's something that they will need to assess and certainly talk to the communities about whether it was, you know, they had taken their time or whether, you know, things that people should have been given enough warning. All I can say is that I'm glad that people are safe, that we haven't seen any fatalities and that we've got everybody out of those communities. And now we need to work with the Northern Territory Government on the task of recovery and, and to try and fix up so that people aren't stuck in town either. Because I know that, you know, particularly those communities, people have lost a lot of their belongings and they'll be keen to go back and have a look at um, the recovery process beyond this flooding. Yeah, um, as you say, really huge uh, rebuilding effort will be needed and there'll need to be a lot of assessment of that. But just going back to evacuations, we had heard earlier from our reporter that there were still people in Kalkarindji who needed to be evacuated. Is your understanding that everyone is now out? Look, it as I, when I uh, spoke to the Chief Minister last night, there were some people that they could, didn't evacuate last night. Uh, they were going back this morning. Um, but as far as she knew, um, those people were safe. Um, and they were looking at going back this morning to make sure uh, that there was nobody left behind, particularly um, across at Dagaragu, which com gets completely cut off from Kelkaringi.